Distribution companies in Nigeria, DISCOs, have accused the Nigerian government, especially the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC, of trying to dissociate itself from the July the 1st increase in electricity tariff. The DISCOs said the increase in tariff and the commencement date were both approved by the NEC. The tariff increase, which was initially scheduled to commence on April the 1st, was postponed. In their statement on Sunday, the DISCOs decried the alleged attempt by NEC to distance itself from the July 1st commencement of increase in electricity tariff. The stance was made known in a statement issued by Sunday Odutong, the Executive Director, Research and Advocacy Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors in Abuja on Sunday. He said that the discos were surprised to receive a letter from NERC warning them not to mention their name or that of the federal government in any public communications on tariff. Joining us now is George Itomi, an energy expert and a stakeholder in the past sector reform in Abuja. Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for joining us, George. Uh, the grievance of the discourse is valid because earlier you'd agree earlier in the year that the NEC approved an increase in tariff for metered customers, uh, which was extended by three months. Why are they backing out now? Well, the principal reason um, for uh, the discos asking for time is largely because we have told the regulator that in the middle of a pandemic, it would be disingenuous to raise tariffs. Um, even though, yes, we've been clamoring for tariffs and the basis for the entire privatization was predicated on cost-reflective tariffs, um, you need to plan and get your consumers prepared to meet with the new tariffs. To announce a tariff and then say it must start July 1, in the, in the, right in the middle of a pandemic, we thought um, would, would, would not help the situation at all. Mm -hmm. We work with our consumer groups, we talk with them, and I know many of them who desire steady electricity are willing to pay more. Uh, but people have been home for like three months now. Uh, many factories are shut down. Many employees have had to endure salary cuts and all that. This is not the time. I know it's hard for everybody, including the federal government, but we just really need to put a human face to whatever we need to do. Right. Um, so at the meeting yesterday, this position was made very clear. In fact, it was a regulator who pushed for it because it was a policy decision taken, and um, in fact, don't take my word for it, the Minister of Power has himself been making these announcements. Um, but the, the issue clearly here is that we must uh, read the polls of the times. Uh, every other client, they are giving palliatives, they are giving um, reprieves to, to businesses and to consumers. Uh, we cannot be moving in the opposite uh, direction. Uh, some of them claim it's because there is a World Bank loan and part of the condition for the World Bank loan is that we should have uh, cost or service reflective tariffs, as they call it. They're all fair and good, but then um, we just still think that um, at this time we should wait and plan properly. Now, secondly, um, uh, the discos uh, suppose once this cost reflective or service reflective tariffs come into play, are now supposed to make 100% full remittances to the market. Now, before that can happen, you need to align the market properly. Many people should understand that even though, because the discos are the face of the industry, um, they collect money from consumers, it is assumed that all the, they keep all the money. The truth is that 80% of the money actually goes up to service the industry. 60% goes to gas producers, and then between the generating companies, the regulators, and all the others, uh, the, 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 others, the, the rest of the money is spread out. So for that to happen, therefore, we must all take an interest in what goes into calculating these tariffs. Mm -hmm. And that was the point the speaker was making yesterday. How do you calculate these tariffs? For example, if we're going to tell our consumer groups, um, somebody who's paying, say, 20, 30,000 a month today, that his tariff is going to double, it is obligatory on our part to ensure that we have been fair to him. So we must factor in how the cost of gas, the cost of generation, we want to be sure 
that those costs are not, they are reasonable. They're not just being dumped on the discourse because we have to ultimately pass it on to the consumers. Right. And all these things have to be aligned. Mm -hmm. So it is this alignment we've been calling for since. The impression being given is that the discos are mindless, they just want to go and collect money. That is absolutely not true because we have to meet up with, with market obligations. As I speak to you today, there are discussions going on about creating waterfalls so that when these monies are collected, they just go to the parties that, that, that require them. Mm -hmm. So we too are interested to ensure that we do not satisfy other members of the value chain and are left with nothing to, uh, to, to continue with our own operations. Uh, Mr. So we too are asking... You mentioned there, I'm sorry to interject, but you mentioned there the calculation of tariffs. Does that explain yes. the modalities of how they arrived at the, the tariffs? Yes, yes. You know, we have what they call the multi-year tariff order. That is the, the mechanism. It's a scientific me mechanism for calculating tariffs. It looks at your cost, the cost at which you produce a particular product. Like in the case of uh, electricity, most of our energy uh, power comes from thermal plants, and the feedstock is gas. And gas is, like I said, the most expensive component. It is the gas producers who supply gas to the generating companies. And that is where we f have the first hiccup. Now, gas pricing has been a big issue in Nigeria from long before privatization. Mm -hmm. And most of the um, legacy debts, uh, when you keep hearing 1.7 trillion has been spent, 1.3 trillion, it's gone to those gas producers. They were legacy debts, debts owed to them because in the wisdom of the federal government, they decided to subsidize the price of gas. And they piled up these debts over a period of time. So gas pricing is, is, is important to have that one right. Mm. And from time to time, when you have disruptions, the gas producers have refused to give gas to the generating companies. And that is part of the complaints we have as discos. Now, when you ask us to go to the consumer to say you will start paying more, the naturally, the consumer expects full service. And now, with the service reflective tariffs, we will owe him or he can claim his money. And if that is going to, going to happen to us, we must ensure that we do not have gas shortages that don't lead to no generation, or after it's generated, the transmission company, which is a big problem, cannot transmit. When you see several disruptions in a day, it doesn't come from the, uh, the distribution companies, it's from the trans transmission companies. So if we are liable to customers, the transmission company ought to be liable to us if we prove that they are the cause for the disruptions. All these agreements have not been finalized. We need to take time to finalize them, which is why we agreed with National Assembly that this, um, uh, even though there's a need to increase tariffs, we should take it to some that next, first quarter of next year. So we can then begin to put in place all the things that would make it work, to align it. Mm. If we rush just to do it, we're just going to have another round of disputes, blame game, all sorts of things going on. And in talking uh, about this thing alignment, have, sorry. In, in talking about alignment, uh, Mr. Itomi, can you clarify for us or give an explanation to why different discos charge differently? Well, you know, there are different bands of consumers. Um, again, um, it's important for the public to understand how uh, consumption is calculated. Now, um, you have v various tariff groups. There's the residential, we call them R1 and R2 customers. They are the lower end. You don't, they don't get your uh, 10, 20 hours, so they pay less. Then there are those who pay, who are going to get a bit more, they pay more. Until you get to those um, 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 maximum demand, demand consumers. Those are the ones who say, don't worry, just give me the power, I will pay. And from the way that it's structured, those top end, they're usually fewer in number, but they're the heavy hitters. They have traditionally subsidized the, the lower end. So this is, and depending on the level of efficiency, the tariffs can vary. And then depending also on the source. For example, some discos augment what they get from the national grid 
from independent power producers, and it's costly. They blend that power, and it therefore comes out more. But you have to talk with any customer groups and be transparent with them to let them know this is the cost. If they can afford it, then give it to them. If they can't, look for somebody else. So this is largely what uh, is responsible for mm -hmm. different uh, All right, with an increase prices. in tariff, are there plans to increase distribution capacity? Now, uh, you understand how this works. I mean, through studies that have all been made, existing distribution capacity today will take 10,000 megawatts a day. The constraint comes from transmission. The generating companies say they have 13,000 installed capacities of which presently they can generate 7,000. But of these 7,000, only 4,000 can be willed by the transmission companies. If they attempt to do more, it will put a strain on their system. So it is what then gets to the distribution companies, which is the 4,000 that is then distributed. So nowhere near what they can distribute. Now, this is not to say there are no hiccups to the distribution end. There are, of course. I mean, you're, I'm sure daily you encounter a transformer is down, a um, feeder is down. Those are distribution hiccups. Yes, if we go into a service reflective regime, the only way you can make money is to provide the service. Because right now, uh, under that regime, consumers will only pay for what they get. So it will be foolhardy for you not to provide the service and expect the customer to pay. So the answer is yes. If, if we get to that, once we get into that regime, everybody, not just the distribution companies, everybody will ramp up so that we can really move to that point where we can begin to take electricity for granted. It holds the key to the diversification of our economy. It holds the key to growth. It holds the key to comfort and so many things. It's a no-brainer. Right. Honestly speaking, if we've seen the way telecoms has worked, how banking has worked, we can do electricity. All right, and thank really you we so can do very it. much, George Itomi, energy expert, for your contributions and your time with us. My pleasure.